Hello, Rupa here from Crafters Corner. I am back with another video tutorial today. As always, we're going to try a new technique uh, with a little twist. I've got a lot of queries about uh, wanting to do a reverse glass decoupage and also with a crackle effect. So I'm going to combine the two and then show you a tutorial today. But then uh, what's the point in doing something straightforward? I always like to twist it a bit to my needs and then of course use a recycled item. So what are we going to recycle today? Of course, uh, that item will come in the end. But to start with, I'm going to recycle this plastic sheet which came with a sweet box. Yes, it's Diwali time. I'm sure all of you would be getting a lot of sweet boxes. So you would end up getting a lot of plastic sheets like this. Let's upcycle one today. I'm going to use this as my faux glass today. Uh, a few weeks back, I also showed you a faux mosaic tile technique also using the OHP sheet. This is similar to that in terms of the fog glass technique that we're going to do. But then we're going to use this as a glass piece today and going to do the reverse decoupage with crackle. So let's get started. Are you ready? So what we would require obviously is the uh, folk art crackle medium and my jar of Mod Podge, my money for all decoupage projects. Here's the Mod Podge gloss that I'm going to be using. That's there and then some brushes and then paints of your choice and a printed tissue so for today's project this is going to be my glass piece and then I have this tissue which I have cut out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decoupage this face down that is how it is going to come you need to understand that all your work is going to be on the reverse and this is going to be your front side and what this fog glass becomes in the end we will see okay so this is my experiment in front of the camera. I have not done one on a plastic sheet, but then there's always a joy of recycling plastic. I've always told you that. So with that in mind, I'm going to start. This needs to be decoupaged now. So what we'll do, I need to carefully adhere this tissue to the sheet. So you need a dry brush and your pot of Mod Podge and then slowly work your way and positioning this tissue in such a way that I get the maximum of the design there and I'm leaving a little bit on the bottom. I have my played mat down and yes, I'm going to start from the center and then adhere this tissue. Gentle strokes. It might appear that wrinkles are formed that's okay because the moment the Mod Podge comes in contact with the tissue it does wrinkle a bit anyways we're going to end up doing a crackle effect on this please note that I am extending the Mod Podge on the entire plastic sheet so this becomes a kind of grip for the crackle medium for the next step and Mod Podge dries clear so there is absolutely no worries about time. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and come back. Yes, I'm back after decoupaging the uh, tissue to the uh, plastic sheet and this is how it looks after drying there's a lot bit of more work to be done on the behind as you know that we are doing the reverse glass for glass decoupage so all these overhangs I'm just going to take it off using the uh, sanding block from plate excuse me for that sound but I just wanted you to show the technique of sanding the tissue off, off the overhangs rather than cutting them using the scissors when you use a sanding block it's a very crisp cut when you pull it downwards like that from the surface so you will not go wrong there so it will be a clean cut but sorry so first what we did was decoupaging the tissue face down onto the uh, plastic sheet now I'm going to start with the crackle medium I'm using the home decor the four cut uh, crackle medium and then we just go about giving a nice coat of the crackle medium. 
again there is absolutely no set rule as to which direction you need to use I'm going to give horizontal strokes you can apply a nice thick coat the thicker the coat the thicker the cracks you can apply nice thick coat like I said the thicker the coat bigger the cracks and yes it's going to take that little time to dry so we have the crackle medium here on top of the tissue I'm going to let that take its time once the first crack appears then I will speed it up okay let that dry and then I'll come back and see you so I'm back after drying the crackle medium this is how it's looking from the front yes you can't make out much we still have a long way to go now what we need to do is the blending of the color so a bit of uh, casual and home decor paint chalk paint uh, sheepskin and casual to get this bit of gray here so what I'm going to do is the tissue portion you can use a sponge and then go about dabbing I'm doing this only in the tissue area and you will notice that cracks will start to appear so don't go about pouncing in the area again and again one dab and then leave it and then the cracks will appear so this is a very thin coat as you know when you start dabbing with the sponge you can see that the cracks are appearing I'll bring it closer to show you yes it's a little difficult because you have to imagine things and start blending from the reverse all right so I have covered the tissue portion you can see the cracks can you see it yeah can you see the cracks appearing yes so we leave that to happen in its natural course okay so there was a bit of a problem with the video I'm so sorry what I've done now is given a full coat of the uh, sheepskin mixed with casual the chalk paint the light gray coat of overall I have covered it and the cracks have begun to appear and for the base I've just used a bit of the river walk which is a sandy brown color so the cracks have appeared it's absolutely dry now what I'm going to do is give the last coat which is you could blend in here to show different colored cracks or you could do your blending as the first layer which is like I have just done gray you could go about doing your blending of multicolored there but then you need to be really careful as to what color would come where so the easiest way would be to give a nice coat of the same color throughout and then work on different colored crackles so in this case I'm going to keep the uh, top with a little multicolored of yellow and uh, green if you can see the cracks there yeah you can see some cracks appearing so I'm going to blend in yellow and green here you can use a brush or a sponge for this because it doesn't matter it's basically you're highlighting the cracks and as I go down maybe I would uh, proceed to black for the central area and then again come back to these yellow and greens at the base so let me see how this is looking as of now this is how it looks you could see the cracks here very fine okay now what I'm going to do is wait for this to dry and give the whole thing a coat of black so that kind of makes this sheet opaque so there's nothing that can be seen through it whether it is glass or the plastic sheet the procedure is the same I know we're going to seal the back with a nice opaque color this is the pure black okay so a nice quart of the black and then seal the back mind you the layers that you've done before should be dry that's very important you don't want this black to merge with the other colors that you've blended 
so now the this is the final coat and then of course we will seal it with varnish it is done let me dry this and then we will flip it over okay so i am back i gave uh, two coats of black at the back i realized that with one coat when i still saw it through light it was a little transparent so i gave another coat of black to totally seal and this is how it looks and i do like the accidental rubbing of the crackle and the black again showing here and there giving it a totally distressed look like i said you just need to go with your style and embrace whatever imperfections come along with your experiments and then make it look presentable that's finally what it is you need to be satisfied with what you've done at least to me this looks nice to the eye yeah it's a little glaring in the camera you will see the final project after some time so as you can see the crackles have appeared on this side the major of the black crackles is around the center and then you can pick up a little bit of the multicolored the yellow and green crackles the finer ones and then the lovely distressing of the black around the edges yes it's another way what you could do to dist give it a distressed finish is rub off a bit of the crackle and then before you give the black so that you know the edges have a bit of a black in my case it was accidental and i seem to like it somehow the entire distressed look that's come around the edges so this is completely dry now i'm going to seal it with one coat of varnish you could use the satin finish varnish from home decor so that's one coat i'm going to give of the varnish and then of course you can wait for this to dry this is basically to seal all the paints at the back so we've done the reverse for glass decoupage with crackle effect same thing is what you need to do on glass which can be on a glass plate or you could do, do it as a glass wall hanging well what am i going to do with this you need to wait and watch i just can't wait to have this on my final project so let me dry this and i'll come back and see you with the final project i'm back after drying so the coat of varnish has dried and i have with me a very very old tray you won't believe this is easily about 15 years old i had done some earlier some texture work and it was in full black and yeah it's been sitting in my junk room waiting to be transformed so what i've done is i retained the black color which was all around i gave the uh, wax on areas i wanted distressed and then i gave a coat of this chalk paint patina and then i have used the scraping tool i have done videos on how to use the scraping tool to distress the edges and around so this has a kind of teal and black distressing done and this my fog glass crackled glass is going to go and sit here okay this is not going to be used as a tray mind you because we have the plastic sheet here i don't know how much of a heat this one is going to withstand so this is going to be definitely a home decor and utility not a tray you will see what it is at the end now how am i going to adhere this to this is i'm going to give a nice liberal coat of mod podge here on the base so there's mod podge here nice coat so that the for glass or the plastic sheet sits nicely as you can see a lot of texture work which was done i have sanded and then leveled it it needs to be smooth okay so that's nice coat of mod podge here now i'm going to have the sheet sit in and then wait for it to dry so yes there it goes it sits in plush now don't even try to peel it or move it you could place some weight on top of it and wait for it to dry so i'll see you on the other side
Okay, so I have uh, allowed this to dry. So this is how the uh, tray looks as of now. I will have some pictures at the end. I'm still thinking on what more needs to be done to this because this is still not fully dry and I don't want to disturb the tray when this is uh, setting. So once that is fully dry, I am thinking of doing something else to this tray so that it doesn't remain just a tray. Um, anyways, like I told you, it's not going to be used as a serving tray. It will definitely be used as a utility item. I want to hang this up on the wall and probably use this as a key hanger. That's what is running in my mind right now. So I'll have some pictures at the end of the video. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Keep liking and subscribe if you haven't done so. I will see you soon with another tutorial. Bye-bye. Thank you.